Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Ryan Girardi here at the 10th Annual Driving Sales Executive Summit in fabulous Las Vegas at the beautiful ARIA Convention Center. We're here in the media station on the Primrose Landing, uh, right outside the Expo Hall where the meals are served and the receptions are, and a lot of good buzz happening going around. I've got Keith Baker here and Mike Carrera, Mike the Car Guy Carrera from Dealer Built. Gentlemen, great to be here with you. Thank you, thanks for having us. It's exciting. Yes. Now you are kind of new on the scene with Dealer Built, but you are not new on the scene in automotive and driving sales. So we're about halfway through uh, this summit. What do you think so far? It's amazing. It's always amazing. I always enjoy coming here uh, for reasons that I think most people that are here agree with and reasons that people that don't come here don't even understand and never will and, until they come. So this is the place where dealers that are innovative and forward thinking come to learn about the industry and learn about the future of the industry and make adjustments now so that they can be ahead of the game there. So when I look around the room, I see a lot of dealers in attendance all paying attention. But what I really see are the number of dealers that are not in attendance. And I'm wondering what the heck they're gonna do because some of the information that's been released just so far, I haven't heard anywhere over here. A lot of them are studies that come directly from driving sales. So a lot of value here. Yeah, and I, th I keep hearing that, that, that people are, dealers are coming here because this is where the, the innovators are, the, the progressive, savvy dealers, as I like to say. They're here, and guess what? They get to collaborate, meet with their peers, transfer knowledge, and go back and, and experiment and apply with it. But how do the people that are not here benefit from that as well? We're certainly doing our part. Uh, Dealer Build is helping sponsor the media station here, and we're capturing all sorts of conversations like this to help get that out there. But we really, and Mike, I want you to speak to this, and I'll, I'll come back to you on, on Jared's keynote, but uh, I just want you to speak to this. You came, you kind of, you know, cut your teeth on the service side in, you know, in auto retail. Uh, you've consulted with dealers around their marketing. Now you're consulting with dealers through, with Dealer Build, but you're, you're working with dealers at so many levels. You know, what are they missing by not being here in your mind? That's exactly right, is, is what they're missing. And, and I always speak to it from a personal standpoint as a GSM for many years. I was always wondering what was going on at those conferences, but I, I wrongly assumed that it was pretty much of a party, you know, because you see a lot of the, the pictures from the parties after the hours, and you think, well, that's what everybody goes to Vegas or New Orleans or San Francisco for, is just to, to go and hang out and have a good time and party. I don't necessarily need that because I'm running a dealership, right? I'm, I'm a control person, so I always assumed if I walked away from the dealership, uh, how is it going to manage? It's not going to operate there? anymore? Right. <laughs> I'm not there. Yeah, you're going to fall in. And, and a few years back, I, I just kind of looked in the mirror and said, you know, if I'm as good a manager as I think I am, my store's going to be fine if I'm not there. And there probably could be something, some information that's going on at these events that would be a value to me in my dealership and help it run better and, and hit that next level of, of success. So when I first came to the driving sales event, I was like blown away at the things that I was immediately able to scribble down and start implementing in my mind how I was going to put it into effect when I got back to the dealership. And then some things worked, some things didn't, but it was always new information that, that I was really, really, really privileged to get, and you're not going to get it by by not attending. You know, you can't read a synopsis of somebody's presentation and get the gist of it, the mechanics of it. You know, there's a lot of wow features. People will, you know, share a snapshot, or a screenshot of some slide that was up in, a, in a, a meeting session, and people go, oh, wow, that's amazing, but you don't get the mechanics of how to implement it. So you just say, well, that's cool. I wonder how he did it, and you move on. If you're here, and I, that's why I recommend to so many dealers that I'm talking to, you, you got to get out to the desk. You got to get out of the sales office. You got to get away from the service drive just for a couple of days. It's worth the investment to come out and, and listen to the people that are already doing the things that you want to do because they're going to show you how to do them. You know, to be a little tongue in cheek, when you were talking about uh, dealers, especially the leaders, uh, the leadership of dealerships not wanting to get out of the dealership, I couldn't help but imagine them having plenty of time to go play golf. Because <laughs> I know that I know they like it. That's a little stereotype, it's but it's just being funny. Yeah. Uh, so, Keith, you we were talking in, uh, uh, just a little bit before this, and I had asked what kind of stood out for you uh, so far, and you had been at, at Jared Hamilton's keynote session. Tell us about. Uh, you know what? What you gained from that? What some of your? What impressed you about his his keynote? Yeah, it was awesome because it's a driving sales initiative. It's a study that they led and did, and it was largely about digital retailing and the consumer experience and how important that is. And that's been a driving force in our business as well, especially as of late. 
uh, but it really brought in insights that I wasn't even aware of. Dealers have, most every dealership by now should have a fairly decent internet department, and they assume that that also means digital retailing. It's not. They're, they're completely different. And the majority, the vast majority of consumers are checking out of the process before they ever make it to the internet department. So the study was about the vast number of consumers that never even make it all the way through to as an internet lead at all, how do we address those and how do we recapture those people and get them back into the funnel? So it's super powerful research about the, the latest generation in digital retailing and I don't know any place where you can find that other than here. Mm -hmm. And for me, that applies not just to consumers that are out there shopping for cars, that applies to, to all of the companies that partner with and work with dealerships. We all have an obligation to, to improve that consumer experience as well and make things like you know DMS, CRM, inventory management tools. We need to have that same level of transparency and make it much easier for the dealers to, to make these decisions about technology options that are going to help their stores. The dealerships can provide a better consumer experience with the service and technologies that some companies offer, like DealerBuild. Exactly. exactly. So let me ask you guys, there, there's some themes that, that have come up over the past year, uh, year and a half, between here at Driving Sales, Digital Dealer, uh, some of the, the panel discussions that I, that I do virtually. One of those themes is consumer experience, consumer experience that everyone brings up Amazon and Apple and, and talking about that, that consumer-centric experience. Another theme that comes up, uh, you know, it go goes back to uh, margin compression, margins being squeezed out of new cars, making used cars and fixed ops kind of the two, uh, the two other pillars at, at the retail level of where dealers can seize profitability. Mm -hmm. Now, I follow you, follow you, Mike, and Dealer Built on social media, and I'm seeing you carry some of these themes, the, uh, you know, Dealer Built and, and consumer experience and fixed ops. So, Keith, maybe you could help us understand where is Dealer Built's I guess play a role, you know, as it pertains to these these themes that are uh, clearly prominent in our in our vernacular right now in automotive. Yeah, yeah, super important. So the consumer experience is critical, and one of the things that was uh, unearthed or released or discovered as a result result of the study uh, that Driving Sales did uh, is that consumers are more than willing to spend a little more money for that great customer experience. And when they interviewed them and did all of the research, they found that the top three things that they were looking for had nothing to do with price, consumers. So they're more than willing to spend a little more money if they get that Amazon-like experience from their dealership. Um, that spills over into every department at the dealership. And in the service department is one area where I think it's been lacking the most. And that's something that we as a company have embraced and we're rolling out products that specifically address that. So we're enabling our clients, our dealer clients, to be able to have that level of transparency with their their consumers through the service department, through our customer experience, consumer experience package. Traditionally, a visit to a service department is not necessarily a pleasant visit. Customers don't look forward to it. Um, they check in their car, they get a ride home or a shuttle to work, what have you. Two o'clock, what's going on with my car? The guy said it's supposed to be ready at five. Call the dealership, the service advisor's in the, the the service department probably checking on that person's car but he's away from his phone so the, you leave a message I'm just checking on my car an hour later the service advisor gets the message calls the customer back well the customer is on the phone or away from his desk he leaves a message it's, it's that phone tag or in the process of doing a multi-point inspection the service technician says hey this vehicle needs brakes we could do that for the customer and still have it done by five o'clock if you get me an approval right now the service advisor calls uh, leave a message hey we saw that your car needs brakes if you call me back right now I can get it done and the customer calls back leaves a message there's just all this phone tag and all these pain points and disconnect and what we've tried to do is, is eliminate some of that by using the customer communication channels that they're already familiar with everyone's texting everyone's doing things on their phone it's just the way that, that we work in this world so if the service advisor has the tools to be able to send a text to the customer, hey, in, in doing the inspection on your vehicle, we saw that you could use this. Would you like to get it done right now, yes or no? Even if a customer is in a meeting, right? And, and so they can kind of look at their phone, click yes, get it done. It increases the efficiency, it increases your ability to increase your, your gross per RO, and it gives the customer the best experience possible because it's really instant, it's really seamless, they see what's going on in the vehicle, hey, your vehicle's been uh, finished in the service department, they're closing up the paperwork right now, it's gonna be ready at your target time, they're engaged, they're, they're informed. Have you ever ordered a pizza uh, from Pizza Hut online? Not Pizza Hut. 
Okay. <laughs> they have this cool little bar graph. Like if you're on their website, you can see when the, the, the guy starts to make it, it's Domino's. Sorry, Domino's. But you can see when they says, you know, Joe has started to make your dough. And then they put it on the plate and they roll it through the, the oven. If you, it's kind of cool. It's like watching a video game. You watch the little bar graph go across. And you it's know like watching your Lyft driver yeah. Yeah. Like go around the it's block exactly and can't right. find you. We all have that type of experience. You see when it gets into the car. It's on its way to your house. Giving the customers that ability with their car in a service department takes away the veil of mystery. Like, what's happening to my car at the service department? And it gives the customers just a, a better sense of they're involved with it. So it's kind of what we've done with the consumer experience module with their DMS is give the dealerships the ability to better serve their customers. It's no longer a luxury. Consumers expect it. They've, they've changed the industry. They've, they've, they've disrupted. The consumers have come in and disrupted the way they want to buy and mm -hmm. shop and, you know, for cars. And so the industry has had to react to that. Uh, and, and many of the dealerships are ahead of the ball and ahead of the curve because they're keeping up on the latest technology and trends, but many are not. As account manager with Dealer Belt, do, you, do your dealers come to you? What are some of the top pain points that they come to you with? What's something you're hearing them say, Mike, I, here's a problem I keep running into. Is there, are there any recurring themes? A problem, there are things that they'd like to improve and time spent is, is the most important. Whether it's in the front half of the house, in sales and, and F&I, the, the, the easier the process is from the time the customer says, yeah, I'll, I'll agree to those terms, let's wrap up the paperwork. That time, once they start that time flicking, that, that stopwatch, five minutes seems like an hour to the customer. Sure. The customer's like, what's taking so long? I've already said yes. I, I, in my mind, I've bought the car. Why can't I be driving the car home right now? So every dealership that I'm aware of, and I talk with a lot, they're trying to just figure out how to increase that efficiency. And there are a lot of tools available for it. And it's getting to a better place. Um, the, the idea of doing it all online appeals to some. And, and if you don't offer the ability to appeal to everyone in the way that they want to, if we still just insist on forcing a customer into the way of business that we want them to go, you're going to lose out on a tremendous amount of business and never even know it. If you offer online buying, it's there. A lot of people are afraid of it, but the reality is how many people, percentage-wise, are actually going to complete all the steps completely online? Right now, it's still a small, Pretty small. percentage. Mm -hmm. So why are you being afraid of that? Yesterday, Jerry was talking about we're all focused on that 4% conversion, right? Mm -hmm. If we're, we're just focusing all our efforts and all our marketing dollars on 4%, you're missing 96% right. of the potential customer base. Service, the same thing, but from the time the car rolls into the service drive until a mechanic has actually got a wrench on it, how, how can we increase that efficiency? How can we get it in there faster so that the customer sees something's going on? The customer sits it in the drive, they sign the RO, they go sit in the waiting room, and they look out the window and their car's still on the drive. Man, what, what are they doing? Then the customer starts feeling that, that distrust. He starts wanting to go up to the service advisor and say, hey, uh, Ryan, you said my car was going to be done by 2, but it's 11 now and it's, it's still sitting there. What What's making, you're speaking to, what I hear you talking about is, is inefficiency, potential inefficiency at, at dealerships, what's making that process inefficient? Or are they setting the wrong expectations for the consumer? I think it's a, a combination for the customer. of all of them. I'm not saying it's inefficient, I'm saying that the customer's expectation is what we need to start looking at. Yeah. The process that we've already always had may work and it may have worked, but the customer's expectations are changing now. I can order something from Amazon and if it's in stock locally, I can pick it up the same day. So now we're not even waiting two days for stuff to come to us, and the customer is still walking into the dealership and being put in a way of doing things that mm -hmm. always work. So now their expectations have gone up, but we need to raise the bar. So we need to increase our efficiency. I'm not saying it's, it's broken as much as how can we make it better. Yeah, I would because I think for the most part, dealerships got that process down. It's about as efficient as it can be, but the con but the customers' expectations Expecting. culturally. We want things faster. Think about if you go to a drive-through and you got to wait more than what 90 seconds. It's like, uh, what the heck? Heck. heck? I don't care how crappy the food is. I still want it. <laughs> and that's why so. we're using technology to increase efficiency. But if you're not trained on the technology, if you're seeing it as an extra step, as a pain in the ass, as a something that's it's creating more work for you, then it's not going to make you more efficient. So it's a matter of when you roll something out to make sure that you're showing everyone how to use it, so that it does increase their efficiency, their time spent. So, Keith, back to you. I'm going to give you a fun question. Okay. All right? Ready. I'm going to put him on the spot. Here we go. Right. We're in the final quarter of 2019. Yep. 2020 is right there around the corner. 
Okay, I'm a dealer, I'm thinking about 2020, right? What am I thinking about? Well, there's lots of speculation and forecasts that say uh, new car sales are gonna drop. Whether they are or not and how much, we don't know. There's lots of speculation that they're gonna drop down to 14, 15 million in the next couple of years. Uh, margins out of new cars, all squeezed out, right? So I gotta focus on used car profitability and fixed ops. What is your advice to the dealership owner operator Coming into 2020, knowing the landscape, where we're at, and what, you know, looking around the bend, what, what's your message to the What do they need to be thinking about and focused on? So the, there's a couple of things that you brought up that I think need to be addressed. The, for, the most important thing is, even if new car sales soften, there are other profit centers in the dealership to pick up the slack for that. But I, I would argue that even if they, they soften, there's enough consumers that are checking out of the process before they even get down to the, to the, towards the finish line. They're not even engaging the dealer. There's plenty of business out there even if they soften for dealers that are going to be proactive enough to employ some of these solutions to engage them in digital retailing and have that positive consumer experience. So I wouldn't let a softening of the new car market scare me at all because there's still plenty of opportunity out there. So, and for me, the second thing is absolute and total transparency in the market is going to give dealers the ability to uh, capitalize on other profit centers within their dealership. We've talked a lot about accessories, optional equipment that can be added after the fact. We've also talked about the fact that consumers are far less price sensitive and far more sensitive to the experience that they have. So I think dealers that can focus on that and trying to get closer and closer to that, I use Amazon, that Amazon type of model, they're going to open up and develop whole new markets that they didn't even have before. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I'm very bold and bullish in the future for dealers that are able to employ these processes and keep those consumers engaged and get closer and closer to digital retailing. And the ones that, that haven't, that aren't embracing that, are the ones that are either going to come along later kicking and screaming or they're just not going to make it. Okay. And I think amongst all that, what I'm hearing you say is convenience, efficiency streamlining mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. and that obviously comes back to people which is is was one of the themes in jared's keynote yeah. is really the consumer to dictate how they want to do the business and rather than forcing them into our process which is easier said than done yes it is yeah and <laughs> really? it hasn't happened overnight no it doesn't happen well, you know, the, the consumer doesn't need to maintain total control but they need to feel like they have control and that's the important thing okay Keith Baker, Mike Carrera, everybody, and Ryan Girardi here at the 10th Annual Driving Sales Executive Summit in Las Vegas. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll, we'll be back for more.